Hey investor friends, I'm Michelle Markey and today I'm going to talk about how Tracy Britt Cool, Warren Buffett's protege, is an investor to watch and I was so stoked when I got to randomly meet her during the Berkshire Hathaway annual meeting in Omaha, Nebraska this year because I'd seen her featured in a Wall Street Journal article and I couldn't wait to learn more about how she embodies Warren Buffett's investment principles and we can think of her as a young Warren Buffett clone because she's definitely applying everything she learned in working for Buffett for over 10 years to her own investment partnership firm, which is long-term minded and it's called Canbrick Business Systems or just Canbrick for short, which is a portmanteau of where she's from in Kansas and also the idea that great businesses are laid brick by brick. So that's where you get can and brick in one word. And she founded it in 2020 with her business partner, Brian Humphrey. And both of them were previously leaders of of a Berkshire Hathaway company called Pampered Chef, where Tracy was the CEO and Brian was the CFO, and they helped Pampered Chef to thrive and earn way more sales than what it had done before. They had helped to digitize it and make it much better in terms of having online sales. And so there's so much that I learned about Tracy Britt Cool from Wall Street Journal and a recent New York Times articles, and also one of her annual letters. And I read the one of the 2021 annual letter that came out in April this year. So from what I've read so far, I'm super impressed. So I wouldn't be surprised if Tracy becomes a super investor someday. And I look forward to following her journey and trying to emulate her moves because I think that she is someone who is a Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger investing disciple, that there's so much we can learn from her. And she's also relatable because she's a millennial. And I think that that's just super awesome that we have this female investor who seems to know what she's doing in business and I think that there's a lot that we could learn from someone like that so if you're also looking forward to learning from this investor I hope you'll like and subscribe to my video and YouTube channel because I hope to be able to check out more of what she's worked on and done and understand how she applies what she's learned to becoming more of a successful business person than she already is because Unlike Berkshire Hathaway, she focuses on companies that are mid-size in general, where they have earnings before interest and taxes of 10 to $50 million, and that's way smaller than what Berkshire Hathaway would be able to acquire. So she's looking forward to helping mid-size companies and also the fact that she can be more hands-on on these companies compared to how Berkshire Hathaway is more hands-off. So those are some of her main differentiators from the original Berkshire Hathaway. And even though she claims she's not trying to make a Berkshire Hathaway 2.0, I think that in some ways you can't help but also kind of make it in the model and likeness of Berkshire. So I think that she's overall going to do a great job from what I've just read so far. And to give a little bit of background information about Tracy, she's always been very business oriented from a young age and throughout her teenage years she helped to run her family's business called Brits Farm Market in Manhattan, Kansas, where she recruited a lot of her classmates to also work there. And by age 15, she was the president of her local farmer's market, which is super impressive because I don't know as many industrious 15 year olds like she must have been. So that's really cool of her. And then she went to Harvard College and then also Harvard Business School. So she went back to back in her schooling. And by the age of 24, she sent an unsolicited letter to Warren Buffett asking if she could work for him over the summer and that turned into more than a decade of working for him so that was a pretty impressive way to go because it's not so often that you would think that you could just write to a billionaire and then they're willing to hire you because she started working at Berkshire Hathaway at age 25 and the rest is history as they say but in so many ways her career is just even at the beginning even though she's already so accomplished so I really think that she's gotten an incredible education and the fact that she's willing to share it with all of us is just super awesome. And also Buffett has shared a lot of high praises for her in past interviews because he said that she thinks like I would. And he also called her a fireman because in anything that he'd assigned to her, she'd done a first class job on. So actually the fact that she's done all this great work doesn't surprise me.
me because she and Buffett have birthdays that are really close together where Buffett was born at the end of August and she was born in the first week of September. And so they're both Virgos. So to me, I think that that makes them really peas in a pod and they're earth signs. So I think that it makes total sense why she chose the metaphor of brick laying as part of her company's name and Cambric. And there's just so much that they have in common with Buffett and Tracy being Midwesterners. So the fact that they have all these things in common made them a real perfect match for a mentor and his mentee. And what enabled Tracy to have a successful career at Berkshire Hathaway and also be a direct inheritor of Warren Buffett's investing style was that she read up, came prepared and did the work at Berkshire. And so the things that she does like Buffett include looking for businesses that have moats or competitive advantages that generate above average returns on capital, as well as she stays within her circle of competence, which means that she's only going to look at businesses that she's capable of understanding and also buy them at a margin of safety, which is a discount between the business's intrinsic value and its price. So in doing that, she focuses on areas that are related to consumers and business services, industrial and manufacturing, and her firm stays away from real estate, biotech and financials. And because she doesn't have the expertise or special insights into some of those areas, she knows what her circle of competence is and what she's comfortable with. And even in looking at her annual letter, she did something that was quite Buffett-like in sort of slightly promoting one of her companies. So I thought that was a very keen way that she just managed to slip that in there of a way that Buffett would do the same and talking about C's candies and she's talking about one of her consumer businesses. And I thought that was really clever. So I think that in so many ways, she's like an almost reincarnation of Buffett. And what differentiates Tracy's firms from many typical private equity firms is that she wants Canbrick to be a long-term home for many founder and family-owned businesses that view their business as their baby because she has a long-term horizon in wanting to help invest in the people and culture of the business and not just be a short-term business renter and flipper because she has this analogy of just like renters and owners treat a house differently, the same is true for businesses. And a lot of these family and founder owned businesses don't just wanna to sell to a private equity or strategic partner or entity that will only own the business for three to four years and maybe take out the cash while loading up the business with lots of debt and then churning it and recycling it with other private equity firms in kind of a never ending cycle of just short term ownership. So unlike doing that, she's offering pretty much a permanent home for businesses that want to see long term growth. And I think that these are fabulous values and principles that she's living up to. And I also think it's a measure of her integrity when she wrote in her annual letter that unlike the advice that other places give businesses, she tells them to continue to hold your business as long as it's right for your family. So it's not like she's insistent on wanting to buy these people's businesses businesses, she's saying that you should totally run your business because it can take many years to build a great business and selling usually only happens once. And even if you sell, it doesn't necessarily make you wealthier, but it just changes the form of your wealth because instead of having your wealth locked up in a business, maybe you're cashing out and then you'll put that cash in some other venture maybe, but in general, it doesn't necessarily make you more money than if you just held on to the business. So I think that she really emphasizes wanting Canbrick to be a good long-term home for any business that also meets her criteria. And that also makes sense to the founder or the family that originally owned the business because if you don't have the same values in place, then maybe any relationship is doomed. So I think that she emphasizes really good points here. And in Tracy's 2021 annual letter, she wrote that they see the most opportunities across five key areas in number one, attracting and developing the right people. And this includes looking for a combination of the three C's and people of capability, character, and culture. And then number two, business strategy. Number three, key performance indicators. Number four, three levels of capital allocation that she describes in more detail further down in the letter. And number five, execution. And across those five key areas, she also added in the capital allocation area where they see it across three levels. And when they're all spinning together, 
together, that leads to compounding value creation flywheel, which I really liked how she described that. And she said, if you find businesses that can have this value creation flywheel, they're really rare because they can generate exceptional returns. And she described one such business as ABC Capital Cities that was run by Tom Murphy and from the time of 1957 when it went public through 1985 when it merged with ABC, its stock had appreciated in price by 23% annually. So that's incredible how much ABC Capital Cities was such a unicorn and it makes sense as to why Buffett loved that company so much and had tremendous respect for Tom Murphy. So I think that's super awesome how she feels like describing these kinds of attributes that are really important and that are often overlooked and capital allocation because she didn't have to share all this insight with everybody but the fact that she's willing to share some information while keeping a few things like business performance closer to the vest is really awesome of her to really enlighten and also teach us about how we should be allocating capital. And while there's way more nuggets of wisdom and insight that Tracy has throughout her letters and also in the interviews she gave with the Wall Street Journal and New York Times, a few more of the nuggets that I'd like to share that I especially related to and enjoyed the most include how she wrote that Canbrick has an insatiable appetite for excellence and a commitment to mastery, which is something that I also try to live up to in any endeavor that I try to do. And also how she shared some book tips like how the outsiders can teach about capital allocation and a few more book suggestions like Charlie Munger's Psychology of Human Misjudgment and a few more because she's trying to encourage others to learn alongside with them and to also welcome the opportunity to work together whether you want to join her family of businesses or just learn and grow together because she also wrote that if you aren't learning you're dying and I totally agree with that sentiment and also I loved how she talked about how the siren song often parts a lot of people from their money and probably Odysseus would have found it easier to be tied to the mass of the ship than to lock himself out of his brokerage account which I also like that how she described Odysseus' story in this way to our modern experience because I find myself feeling like like Odysseus in ignoring the siren song of FOMO and resisting buying stocks when I feel like a lot of them still have really high valuations. So I feel like Odysseus and having to tie myself to the mass of the ship to ignore the siren song and not give in to the FOMO. And also she was kind of like Charlie Munger in writing about how in light of the meme stonk frenzy of last year that a lot of human psychology hasn't evolved since the tulip mania of the 1630s and I think that the chickens are really coming home to roost with a lot of digital assets in the crypto space that we're seeing play out today in 2022. So I think that there was so much awesomeness that Tracy has shared with the world so far and I look forward to following her journey even more and let me know what you think in the comments. Have you checked out what Tracy's been up to or reached out to Canbrick? What's your experience? I'd love to hear from you and if you enjoyed this video or learned something please like and subscribe and I wish you well on your journey to being the best investor you can be. Till next time.